Are we live? Are we live? Looks like we're live. Hello everyone and welcome to yet another recreational programming session. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, hello, Ceremon. Uh, let's make a little bit of announcement and officially start the stream. So uh, let me do the usual thing. A red circle live on Twitch. And what are we doing today on Twitch.television? Let me actually see. Today we're doing no engine game development again. Right, so today, well, I already tried to do the topic, today's topic on one of the streams, on the previous stream. Uh, but unfortunately, on that stream, I was super tired and I had to scrap uh, the the entire stream. So today is going to be a second attempt at implementing what I planned to implement. Right, so today we continue working on the Jai break, uh, right, the game that I'm implementing in Jai. You can find this thing in here, right, and uh, you can play this game in here if you're interested. So you can find all of these things in here. So it's a, it's a simple uh, breakout clone, right, so nothing special. It's actually quite fun. I play, uh, play this game in my spare time for recreational purposes so i think it's good enough to you know to be played like that uh it's kind of funny like i recently started to uh make my own games <laughs> this is basically the ultimate uh linux gaming experience right so you write your own games right so you don't play games on steam or anything like that you write your own games so uh if you want to be a gamer on linux th this is how you do that so hello everyone welcome 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 so essentially what I was planning to do, right, what I was trying to do on the previous stream is that I was trying to implement uh, a tutorial, right? So a tutorial has to be extremely subtle, uh, right? So it's just like, a, you know, basically showing signs and expecting you to do some actions. Uh, I wanted it to be similar to ZZZWE, one of the games that I developed some, some time ago, right? So essentially this is the game right and it says the tutorial right it just shows you a sign and waits until you do a certain action right so it wants you to move around okay so you learn how to move around now it waits you to um you know to shoot something you start shooting and there you go the, the game has started already so but the game doesn't start until you actually like pass the tutorial and once you pass the tutorial once uh it is actually saved in your local storage right and then the uh, tutorial is never played again. So as you can see, it is not played again. I want something similar for the uh, for the jailbreak, but it's slightly different, right? Because a different sequence of actions is expected from you. All right. So essentially, um, I wanted to wait uh, until the user learns how to move, and only then snap. Uh, the ball into into the bar and then I wanted to say like press space to start the game But I want it to be slightly more interesting right in the sense that if the user uh, Right away does the actions that the game expects you to do. I don't want to show the tutorial Right, so this is like a little bit more subtle essentially if the player right away starts moving around and pressing space the tutorial is never gonna happen Right, it will just never happen. The user will never see that. Even if it, if the user never actually uh, played the game before, if the user starts already doing things that the game expects from you, like the tutorial is never gonna appear. Right, and if it does, if you do it partially, it's gonna like also work partially. Essentially, if it if you start moving but doesn't know how to start the game, it will still show you how to start the game. So because of that, it's a little bit more complicated. And uh, I was tired and uh, yeah, I couldn't finish it in time, right? So, but I think this time, this time we should be able to do that. This time we should be able to do that. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, all right, so let me go to the source code and scrap everything that we managed to do. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna go to a jailbreak. break. All right, git status. So we have some stuff in here. I'm gonna do reset minus hard, and I'm gonna clean FDX everything. Right, so we starting from the uh, from the blank page from the scratch. Is that how we say English? I don't know. Like I'm str I'm trying to speak Russian uh, while speaking English. <laughs> I'm trying to use Russian idioms when I'm, when I'm speaking English. Mm. Which happens sometimes. Yeah. 
Okay, do, do I have anything? Did I do anything off screen? That's a very good question. Alright, so uh, let me try to build the entire thing. Mm. All right, so the build right now actually builds literally everything. So it builds like three of those things. I should probably use Emacs. I don't have a Vim highlighting in here, though I already have Emacs running. So I could have just as well opened Jai break in here, right? So Jai Linux first, right? And the problem here is that it literally builds everything three. Uh, all of these three builds, release, debug, and WebAssembly. And I do plan to add another one because WebAssembly is right, like right now built as a release WebAssembly. Uh, I also want to have a debug WebAssembly that has all of the debug features like hot reloading configuration, for instance, and stuff like that. Uh, by the way, uh, the debug configuration has uh, other cool features, right? So it is capable of doing SVG screenshots not PNG, but actual SVG screenshots. Uh, and I'm not even joking, right? So if you do, uh, if you just like move around and I press F3, right? And if you go in here, you will see a screenshot.svg. You can open this thing, an SVG editor. Um, right. Let's just wait a little bit. And this is, an, like, you can see that this is a screenshot of the game. There is no text because this particular feature does not support text. But it's in SVG. You can actually click on those things and move them around. So what it does, it actually renders this frame into SVG and saves it. Right, because the, the game only needs uh, rectangles. So it can just collect all of the rectangles and import them into SVG. Right, and then, for, for instance, the, the reason why I developed this feature is because I wanted to make uh, thumbnails out of the screenshots of the game. Right, and since I wanted to have a thumbnail, I wanted to be able to scale it indefinitely. Right, so, and this allows you to do that. I can, I can actually scale it indefinitely. Right, I can just like do it like that, and it doesn't lose any of the quality. Right, so it's just like stays the same. So it's actually a pretty interesting feature. And for debug purposes as well, it's also quite good, right? So, yep, thumbnail feature. Yeah, even particles, even particles are small, like rectangles. You can actually work with them. You can even change the color of, of something if you want to, if you want to adjust something, it's just like very, very convenient. You don't have to work with the, uh, with the pixel images or any of that, you know, things from the previous age. Uh, okay, so and rendering SVG is actually super simple, right? Because you just take all of the rectangles that you're supposed to render and you just use a rectangle uh, tag, right? So you just turn them into rectangle tags and it's super easy, right? Such a cool feature, really like it. Mm, anyway. Uh, so essentially, uh, I'm going to have like the fourth build that uh, does all of that, but also in the browser. By the way, making a screenshot with SVG in a browser makes even more sense because the browsers can actually view SVGs and shit like that. Right, so uh, as far as I know, like in browser, you can even manipulate the SVG DOM uh, using JavaScript. I could have actually written this in the game using SVG, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> But I mean, uh, it's 2022, we're supposed to use the canvas. So essentially what I wanted to do, I wanted to actually like disable all these builds, right? Because they kind of like stay in our way. Uh, so it, it's nice to check that it's built on all of the platform. But while I'm developing, I think it's just like, it's better to build only one and it's actually super fast, super easy, and that's fine. Okay, so this is how we're going to be working with all that. Okay, so let's go into the game. So in the game, we have the state machine, right? So a simple graph state machine. Um, by the way, when did I get trusted? Farcon00 asks, uh, I think today, right before the stream. All right, so, and in here, what do we have? Ready is basically the state when the ball is snapped to the bar, right? It's it's attached to the bar and you're moving around. Play is when it's detached and you're actually playing. Restart is when the ball from the live bar is moving towards the bar to snap and go into the ready state. And game over is not used anywhere because it's, it's game over. We haven't coded that yet, right? So essentially, I want you to introduce another state, which is a tutorial, right? I already did that, but I'm going to do that again because I want to start from scratch. And in the tutorial, uh, nothing's happening 
until you try to move right until you try to move as soon as you try to move we go into the restart and uh wait until the player uh you know starts the game ragul i hope i pronounced your nickname correctly thank you so much for um how many how many months are oh, you, you gifted thank you so much for gifting us up uh okay so uh now yeah so and essentially if we go into the update right if we go to the update um we don't really have to do anything on update let's go to init state all right and we're gonna start the game from the tutorial state right so we're starting from the tutorial might as well also run the game so it's gonna be jailbreak debug right and as you can see nothing's happening right so uh literally nothing is happening because we're not switching the state there is nothing you can do to actually start playing the game so let's go to key press uh let me find key press and if you press any of these things like a and d we have to uh, switch to the restart state right uh, but only if we are in the tutorial state if state is equal to tutorial right uh, then switch to the restart state not return but rather restart there we go so that's what we're gonna have in here all right and i'm gonna do that on both of these keys or n on n on a and d okay is if i try to move around it goes yeah essentially it's it's already acts like a tutorial right basically this is what i want mechanically from the game itself right so Technically, the tutorial is already over. Like it's it's there. This is what the tutorial should uh, should behave as. But the problem is uh, the tutorial should also have the signs that explain what the player needs to do to actually advance in the tutorial, right? So and this is where the problem starts because it's really like uh, difficult to align in terms of timing. Essentially, when I start the game, I want nothing to happen until the player moves left or right but if the player doesn't move left or right for like one second or two seconds the pl uh, the game should fade in a sign saying uh, saying press a or d to move around right and once the player finally moves around it should fade out then the ball should snap into the bar we should wait one or two seconds again and the game should say press start to, uh, press space to start the game so that padding of a second is needed uh, specifically for what i um, for what i described before if you start to move around and press in space none of the signs will appear ever right so that padding of like one two seconds is given to you to actually prove that you don't need the tutorial you know what I mean? It's, so it becomes like a very subtle. If you like start the game and start moving around and pressing things, like the game is not going to tell you anything at all. If you stutter, if you wait a little bit, the game will realize, oh, this is a noob. So we need to teach that noob how to play the game. So it starts to show these signs. And it has to be like a very subtle, very timed properly. So the user doesn't really notice anything. And it, the game is not being annoying. You know what I mean? It's it's like a it's a very interesting problem that I'm trying to solve in here. So yeah. And because of that, it's just like I need to time everything properly and it's just like eh, becomes kind of a mess very quickly. Uh, becomes of a mess very quickly. So all right, so what I need to do, I need to introduce a notion of uh, like a pop-up, right? So and pop-up is the text that is shown in the center. So let's actually literally introduce this thing. Uh, pop-up is going to be a structure right and it shows the text so it has a text associated with it right but the pop-up can be uh, in different states right so uh, let's actually introduce this thing so this is by the way the cool thing about uh, Jai is that you can define enumeration specifically for one variable this enumeration is not going to have a name Right, this is a type that doesn't have a name, uh, but it is associated, associated with this specific state because it's not going to be like used anywhere except here. So why even give it a name? Right. Uh, okay. So initially, a pop-up is hidden. Right. It is hidden. You don't see it. If you wait long enough, it starts to fade in. Right. So let's introduce the state fade in. So it's fading in. 
right? It's appearing, it's alpha increasing. <laughs> right, so then once it appeared, it stayed, I guess, displayed, right? So let's call display. And it stays there until uh, the game tells that pop-up to disappear. Right, so we stay there for as long as need because the player may not do the required action indefinitely. So we'll have to wait indefinitely, essentially. So after we sort of like disposed this pop-up, it should start fading out. Right, and once it went to the fade out phase, this pop-up is generally not needed anymore, right? So we want to indicate that it's sort of like disposed, right? Disposed, let's literally call disposed. So basically each pop-up with this idea, like of showing pop-ups and stuff like that, it, it goes through the like five phases of grief, <laughs> five stages of grief, right? So hidden, fade in, display, fade out, and then becomes disposed, and then uh, goes the next pop-up. Right, and essentially what we need to facilitate, uh, doing here, we need to facilitate transition between these states. Right, does that make sense? Uh, yeah. And we also need some sort of a variable, like a, uh, a variable, which will go from zero to one, uh, and it will indicate um, like how, it will basically indicate the progress of the animation, right? So we're gonna have a certain amount of time that we're hidden, and A in that case is going to indicate how much time we already waited, right? So from zero to one, and fade in is the same. Display is actually kind of special, so we're probably gonna hard code that behavior. For the display, you just basically stay indefinitely in display until uh, you tell the pop-up to start fading out, right? And uh, when it's disposed, it also stays indefinitely indisposed and it can switch to anything, uh, anywhere, because we already sort of used up that pop-up, right? Okay, so that's basically the structure that we'll probably need. Uh, okay, so uh, let me do the following thing. We'll need some sort of a function that updates the pop-up, that advances its state. Right, so it will accept the pop-up by a pointer because it will need to uh, modify it. And one of the things I like to do, I like to do using. Right, a using is basically uh, a keyword that takes all of the fields of the pop-up and um, exports them into the current uh, scope. So essentially, if I refer to state, I in fact refer to pop-up state. Right, I don't have to do pop-up.state. I know that I'm referring to the one from here. Right, which is rather convenient. So it's, it, it acts like with from Pascal, if you have a program in Pascal, right? So it's actually quite convenient in here. So, and this thing is going to accept the delta time, how much time has passed uh, since the previous pop-up update. So we can get that delta time from the global update function that is called every frame. So we're gonna be calling this thing every frame essentially. Right, and essentially, depending on the state of the pop-up, we're gonna be doing different things in the pop-up update, right? So I think that makes sense. So it's gonna be state equal equal. So this is a switch case. And let's actually take all of these things. Maybe I'm gonna just start with uh, hidden, right? So if the state is hidden, what are we doing? So we are waiting in hidden for a certain amount of time, right? That means we need to um, update the thing. Interestingly, if A is greater than 1, that means we already waited enough and it is time for us to switch to the next state. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, when is Jaya going to be for public? I think the best uh, answer to that question would be never. <laughs> Uh, it's actually a kind of cool idea. Imagine like to create like a very hyped up language and never make it public. So it's always going to be in beta and it's always going to be available to at like a chosen circle of people and it's never going to be public. This is beautiful actually, I like this idea. <laughs> Alright, so anyway, uh, this is not important. When the language becomes public is not important. Everything I do in here can be easily done in C and C++, and I'm not even joking. And even furthermore, in C and C++, it would be more convenient, right? Because what I'm doing in here is that I'm compiling this thing to WebAssembly, 
Jai does not support WebAssembly. I'm doing a huge hack, which actually kind of limits uh, what I can do in here. If I use C, C++, I would be able to actually do more. Uh, probably it would make it easier for me to use CMD instructions, right? So, yeah. The language in this particular case doesn't really matter. Uh, I could do all of that quite easily with C and C++. It really doesn't matter. Mm. In my opinion, languages are overrated. Languages are important. I do not disagree with that. But people put too much importance on the language. Mm -mm -mm. Is Jai interpreted or compiled? What's the difference? What's the difference and why that difference matters? All right, so let's continue. Uh, so when A is greater than one, uh, we want to switch to fade in state, right? So what we need to do, we need to reset A at zero, right? So uh, we start in the animation from, from scratch. And uh, then we switch the state to fade in. Right, there we go. So this is this should happen when we are done with the animation. Maybe it should be in somewhere in else. Uh, in that case, I'm going to do something like this. If it's less than one, this is going to be that. Uh, all right, so and when A is less, what I need to do, I actually need to add DT. And this is not correct, because A has to be from 0 to 1, and the hidden, specifically for hidden, we're probably going to have some sort of a special con uh, constant, right? So let's actually call it something like uh, pop up uh, hidden time, right? So this is going to float, and this time is going to be in seconds, right? As I already said, I want it to be like two seconds. Let's say it's going to be two seconds, right? And because of that, like plus dt, would make sense if a was in seconds but a is normalized from zero to one how can we like m upgrade or modify dt so when we keep adding it to a a will reach one in two seconds is it clear it's, it's actually kind of like very wordy for, uh, formulation of the problem but essentially a is from zero to one how can we uh, map dt or modify dt so if we keep adding that modifying value to a, a will reach 1 in 2 seconds. Essentially, what we can do, we can map zero, uh, the range from 0 to 1 to from 0 to 2 seconds by essentially doing pop-up uh, hidden multiplied by a. Right, so essentially we took the normalized value and we map that value to a uh, range of time from zero to that specific time. And then we can add dt, right? Because adding dt in that sort of like measure unit makes sense, uh, right? And then we have to normalize it back. We have to normalize it back. To normalize it back, we have to divide it by pop-up uh, hidden time again. Now we can actually open parentheses, which will end up removing this thing from A and will divide dt by that. So essentially what we have to do is just divide it by pop-up hidden time. Since we're doing everything in floats, it will work out. So that's basically how we do that. That's how you can come up with this formula, so to speak. Right, so essentially uh, A will move from 0 to 1. But since you divide by hidden time, it will reach one in hidden time. Uh, so does it actually impose any problems with um, errors in floating points? I don't really know. Maybe it does. Maybe we should learn more about IEEE 754 format, but this is a particular convenient way of doing these things. All right, so now, uh, what's going to be the next thing? So we'll have to do fade in. Uh, it's pretty similar situation, right? A plus dt, but this time it's going to be fade in time. Otherwise, we're going to do something else. Right, if we reach the, f uh, the end of fade in, right? If we reach the end of fade in, we have to go into the display. Uh, in case of display, 
I suppose we just stay in display forever until we're asked to uh, to fade out. So in case of display, I'm literally not going to be doing anything. In case of fade out, right, in case of fade out, it's the same as here. If A is less than 1, uh, then A plus uh, pop up fade out, right, we're going to have all of these constants in there. And after we fade it out, uh, we can consider this thing disposed, right, disposed, there we go. And if we are disposed, we just stay in the disposed state forever, right, so that's basically the, the thing that we have in here. This is how we transition between these five states. <clears throat> Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm -mm. Why do people want programming Jai so badly? It's not finished language. In fact, uh, my first impression of Jai was actually rather underwhelming. <laughs> right? <laughs> because it doesn't support like a lot of things because it's not finished uh so structure literals for instance they only only require you to uh to have constant things right for instance if you want to create like a vector uh vector 2 you can't use the structure literals because this dt has to be constant and this is not constant so and that is not finished right furthermore like it doesn't have a web assembly support so whatever i do in here is actually kind of difficult to do like, you really don't want to program in this language yet, right? Um, so, I, I'm, I'm telling you, just, just wait until it's publicly released. Seriously. It is kind of underwhelming. Um, Alright, so it has an interesting idea, but it's like, technically, it's not finished, right? It also has bugs that crash the, uh, the, the compiler, so it's, it has a lot of fun stuff. Right, so just wait until it's uh, it's finished and then you can play with it. Okay, so we don't have a... Okay, so it wants the semicolon in here. So let's add a semicolon, right? Uh, so we need to implement fade in. <clears throat> All right, so now what we're gonna do... So this is gonna be fade in and uh, when we fade in, how quickly are we gonna be fading in? I, I want it to be rather slow, right? So it's gonna be uh, one. And fade out, I think it's gonna be a little bit faster, like half of a second. Uh, half of a second. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Okay. So, and this is just an update function, right? So this is just an update. Let me see if it compiles. It should, it should be compiling though. There we go. And uh, we also probably need to implement the rendering function, right? So we need to be able to render it. So let's do pop-up, uh, pop-up render. So we can be using pop-up. And uh, we already know how to render the pop-up. Let me show you. When you press escape, we already kind of render the pop-up the way I want it to render, right? So I want it to be like at the center in here, right? Let's quickly find where we uh, render the pose. Here it is. And let's literally copy paste these two lines of code. And this is going to be the pop-up rendering, literally. Uh, right. So um, I'm going to rename this thing to just text width, right? So text width. And we're going to be rendering the text. Right, so we prepare and everything and let's just try to... So though we have to render it differently depending on the current state, because on different states it's going to have different alphas, right? So it's, it's quite important to remember. So let's define alpha, which is going to be float. Uh, we're not going to initialize it anything, we're going to initialize it based on the current state. Right. If the state is hidden, right? So we have a hidden state, the alpha must be zero, right? So it's zero. If it's fading, uh, if it's fading, alpha is kind of equal to A, right? So because it's animation from zero to one and alpha is gonna be from zero to one, it makes sense. If the, if the animation is display, uh, right? It's not disposed, but display. The alpha has to be always one. 
if it's fade out, it's actually the opposite. It's actually the opposite. So the bigger the value in fade out, um, uh, the smaller the alpha should be. So we can do something like one minus a. So it's like the opposite value. And in case of uh, dispose, right, in case of dispose, alpha is going to be zero. There we go. So that's basically the stages of alpha. The color, the base color is going to be the color of the text, uh, right, the usual color that we're using here. And we're going to set the alpha to like this. And this is what we're going to have in here. All right, so text height. Oh, shit. Where do we have a text height defined? Uh, oh, it's kind of like a constant value, but not really. Right. So we have a text width and we also have a text height. Right. So it's quite important in computation of the of the thing. OK, uh, so let's actually test how this entire thing works, if it works at all. So let's create a pop up. Uh, let me see. So we have a state and this one is going to be just a pop up. Uh, pop up and what we want to do in here I might as well actually use the structure literals the text is going to be equal to your mom right and the state is going to be hidden right so we're going to fade in your mom slowly right so let's see uh, but we're not actually hooking up the pop up into the update in and rendering right so let's actually find update Right, and in update, we're gonna constantly call pop-up update, right? So this is gonna be pop-up, and we're gonna be doing dt. And in a render, right, in a render. So we have to keep in mind is, uh, is that when we pose, the pose is gonna overlap the pop-up. So we can only render the pop-up uh, when there is no pose, right? So it's gonna pop-up render, and this is gonna be pop-up. Uh, right, so it's gonna be something like that. And let's see if it's gonna... Ah, shit. All right, so what do we have in here? Sata. I don't know what that's supposed to mean, but... All right, so what else do we have in here? Um, is that because I wanted to have a comma? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it worked. I mean, it, it waited a little, a little bit. And then it, uh, yeah, it started to, to do this thing. <laughs> this is the tutorial, everyone. Uh, this is the tutorial. Mm. And I really like that it's just like so dramatic. <laughs> uh, okay. So um, we need to ch test how we're going to be disposing the pop-up, right? We need a way to just say, okay, dispose that shit. We don't need it anymore. Um, okay, so this pop-up dispose. And by the way, dispose is really important because it will act differently depending on the current state, right? Because when you dispose, this thing should just fade out. Uh, but if you try to dispose that something that is already hidden, it should instantly dispose, right? So there's a little bit of logic involved into how you dispose depending on the current state of the pop-up, right? So that's why this problem was kind of difficult. And when I was tired, uh, like I couldn't properly solve it. So let's see. Um, um, your death starts, starts to fade out and doesn't appear. Yeah, that's kind of sad. But yeah. All right. Uh, if you are hidden, right, if you are hidden and you're trying to dispose the thing, right, you can just straight, uh, right away just say disposed. That's it. You don't have to worry about it. If you're fading in, right, you're currently fading in and you are in the middle of fading in, right, uh, what you have to do, you have to essentially start fading out from the place you stopped fading in, right? And it's sort of like an opposite thing. Uh, so essentially, we can take the opposite of A, right? So this is what we initialize this thing with. And we set the state to fade out. Uh, fade out. All right. Uh, then, if we are in display state, Right, if we are in display state, um, though I'm not quite sure. Yeah, so it, it should be fun. 
uh, okay, if we are in display, A should be zero, and we go into the fade out. All right, if we already fading out, if we're already fading out, there should be nothing we can do. Like, we, we don't do anything. We're already fading out, we're already disposing everything. And if we're, if we're already disposed, well, there's nothing to do in here. So you see, depending on the state, we just, like, do slightly different things. Um, right. And what I want to do, right, I'm going to now hook up, pop up, dispose uh, to one of these keys. Right, there we go. Uh huh, and it didn't really work. Pop up, dispose. Uh, I suppose I should not really accept DT. I don't think it's particularly useful in here. All right, so I'm just waiting. Yo, mom. I start moving around and it disappears. That's roughly what I want you to do. Now, this is quite important. If I start the game and start moving around right away, your mom never appears. This is precisely what I was trying to achieve. So this is the tutorial that is not really invasive. It actually detects uh, that you already know how to do certain thing. It doesn't try to teach you what you already know. Uh, Lemurza, thank you so much for a tier 1 subscription. Right, so it doesn't try to teach you. This is what I was trying to, uh, to achieve. So uh, I start the game. I have no idea what to do. I'm trying to press left and right, and it says, your mom, and it's suddenly, ah, and I know how to move around, and there you go. So that's actually pretty cool. I really like that. Um, and after the ball, like, snaps into this thing, after the ball snaps into the thing, what we should do, uh, we should play another sign that says like press space to to start the game right and it should be the same sort of pop-up right so furthermore i think i should actually change your mom right so uh press a or d to move around right. mm -hmm. okay press a or d to move around And now it should say press space, but um, it's kind of interesting. Uh, so pop up, press AD. Uh, so I probably want to go through all the compilation errors. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So I should go here, press AD. So we're going to have two pop ups in here, right? So we're going to have two of them. Um, press. And this one, press. Okay. Mm. Q. Mm -hmm. So, let's introduce another one. Press space. Pop up text. I think I don't even have to say that it's hidden because it's zero initialized, so it should be the default value. I can just say pop up and just provide the text in here. Press space to start. There we go. And uh, let me see what we're gonna have in here. And this one is rather complicated. Right, so we are currently updating. We're currently updating only this one. But we also have to update this one, but we only have to update this one if this one is disposed. Right, and I also plan to add a third one in the future, right? After you start the game, I want the pop-up to say good luck or something, right? So I want to encourage the player to, uh, to play the game, so... Um, maybe I need to create sort of like another entity on top of the pop-up right uh that composes like a queue of pop-up but do we really need to have a queue uh i don't think so yeah so what i want to create is sort of like a pop-up deck right pop-up deck which is a struct and it contains the cur current pop-up right and it will also contain the text, uh, next pop-up text, right? So, and essentially, I have a planes in here. Uh, so, essentially, the pop-up deck 
will act like a pop-up in terms of like it will have an update method and render the method and it will just update and render the current pop-up but once this pop-up is disposed it will create a new one based on that next text so essentially when you dispose in the current pop-up it already prepares for the next one to show so it never actually shows the next one until it disposed the previous one Right, so that's why it's needed. So it acts like a buffer, right? So it makes sure that you're not trying to show the next pop-up without disposing the previous one because you need to play the animation, right? You need to fade it out because it will just like disappear, like snap into uh, out of the existence and it's not going to look uh, good, right? It needs to be animated, faded out. And that's what this thing will uh, make sure. Um... Mm -mm -mm -mm. <laughs> all right and what's interesting is that uh shouldn't you not have a queue of this pop-up of pop-ups right so what if i just like keep adding more and more pop-ups into this into this deck well you need to be able to show the pop-up in a meaningful way to the user if you have too many pop-ups in the queue, do you show all of them simultaneously? Do you show them as quickly as possible? Uh, in my understanding of the tutorial, as I already said, in the tutorial, if you already showed how to do certain thing, the game should not show you that thing. So essentially, the if you keep adding pop-ups into the deck, the next is just keeps overriding. So if you're adding pop-ups too quickly, that means you don't want to read the previous pop-ups anyway because you've already done all of the actions that you need to do, right? So they're not going to be shown anyway. So that's why there is, uh, like, the queue should consist only of two elements, right? The current one and the next one. If you add more things, they should be automatically overwritten anyway because you don't have time to show them, right? Because you already did the thing uh, that needs to be done. So it's, it's a pop-up system specifically for this kind of tutorial. Right, so, uh, and uh, yeah, so this uh, should work, uh, but the pop-up deck should be also, uh, it should be able to be empty, essentially, it sh we should have some sort of indication that uh, there is no pop-up in here, no current one, no nor next one, right, so, and I'm thinking how to indicate that, we, we can have something like a active, all right, and if active is true, that means the current pop-up is not disposed and you do a thing. Uh, and we can indicate the lack of the next pop-up with the string being empty, for instance, right? Something like this. I could indicate the lack of pop-up here as like if the pop-up is disposed, all right? But it's not the default value. The default value is hidden, unfortunately, but... Uh, maybe this is something that we can... Ah, whatever. So let's just have a variable. Anyway, so let's do uh, pop-up deck. And let's implement the update function, right? So we're going to have deck using deck. Pop-up deck. Uh, and here we're going to accept the float. Um, mm -mm. So, and let me, let me see. So we have two situations in here, when we are active and when we are not active. When we are not active, we don't have any pop-up currently, so there is nothing to do. So, yeah, only when we are active. Uh, when we are active, uh, we probably just need to dispatch pop-up update, pop-up update to the current pop-up in here, right? So we're just updating the underlying pop-up. After that, the pop-up can be in two uh, states, right? It can be disposed and it can be not disposed, right? If it's not disposed, we just continue our business as usual. Uh, if it is disposed, we have to check if we have the next pop-up. If the next pop-up text has something, we have to queue that pop-up into the current one. Otherwise, uh, we ran out of pop-ups, we can just say that we're not active anymore. So active become false, right? Something, something like this. Uh, if we do have some text in here, what we have to do, we have to set pop-up 
text to the next pop-up text, we have to res uh, uh, reset its state to hidden, and then we have to set its uh, animator, interpolator, uh, to zero as well. And I guess that's it. So do we need to do anything else? I... Oh, we also probably need to say that, okay, we don't have next pop-up. Yeah, there we go, right? So we used up the next pop-up so it will not try to play it again. So something like that. It, the logic is a little bit complicated, but it's basically a queue of two elements, right? So the first element is the active pop-up that we're currently playing. The second element is the next um, is the next text. And every time you try to like add a new element to this queue, the next is just gets overwritten. And that's basically it. An active is sort of like a counter that tells you how many things you have in there. Uh, and that's basically it, right? Uh, a bit complicated. I hope it's worth it. So uh, let me let me see. Okay. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to implement a deck push that pushes the next text, right? So we're gonna accept using deck uh, pop up deck. Uh, where is the deck? Uh, why didn't go here? Yeah, that's what I wanted. Deck. Then we're gonna accept the text, and there we go. So we have a two situations in here. If we're active, uh, we have to set next text, right? We're setting it to next. If we're not active, we got we gotta set it to the current pop-up, right? Pop-up state becomes hidden, uh, and then pop-up a i a not not i a zero and we become active active there we go so that's basically what we do and another thing we can do in here is a pop-up deck render something like this so using deck um, pop-up deck and we're only gonna render if we're active pop-up render uh, pop-up there we go so if we're active only then render so pop-up deck should act like a drop-in replacement for the pop-up itself right so and you should be able to just push new values into it and it will do those things hmm. interestingly maybe we should have um like a way to say okay dispose that thing mm. maybe it's a <laughs> yeah, so let's actually go ahead and do that. Um, yeah, so pop up deck dispose. Um, oh, by the way, I forgot to put dot dot in here, even though it doesn't really matter because I can just like uh, the compiler should tell me, but anyway. Using deck, uh, pop up deck. So when we dispose the current thing, it only makes sense to uh, when it's active. If active, then pop up dispose the current pop up. There you go. Interestingly, I think maybe if we are uh, if we are pushing and we are active, we should dispose this thing. Right. So if you push a new one. Um, we're disposing this thing, right? So that should be fine. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to, mm -mm -mm, to the pop-up. So we don't have a pop-up press. We're going to just have a pop-up deck. Uh, and in here I can just say pop-up deck. There we go. So let's go through the compilation errors. Uh... Hmm. Okay. Mm, pop up deck. Mm -hmm. Pop up deck render. Mm, pop up deck dispose, right? Mm -hmm. Pop up deck. Mm -hmm. And pop up update. Mm -hmm. Pop up deck. So it has to be also like that. 
uh, dispose. Oh, this one is rather interesting. Okay, so when we are doing all of these things, so the init state, right? So we have init state. We have init state. Uh, so we start with the tutorial, but one of the important things we do uh, is pop up deck. Mm -hmm. I always wonder how come you never have to debug your code like I do for hours because I don't program in a dynamically typed language like you do with your JavaScript. Uh, you probably don't program in JavaScript. I'm just just joking. Uh, all right. So, but static typing is very important thing, right? So static typing actually uh, catches a lot of errors, so you don't have to debug it too much. All right, so pop-up deck, uh, and what I want to do, I want to push uh, pop-up deck in here, and I'm going to say press A or D to move around, right? Uh, speaking of debugging, does J have breakpoints? It's an incorrect question to ask, actually. Language doesn't have a breakpoints. It's the debugger that has prop uh, breakpoints. So if you asking, is it is there any way to step debug Jai? The answer is yes. You can generate debug symbols for Jai, and you can debug it in GDB on Linux, as far as I know. Right, I never tried that, but I I saw the dwarf format support for for Jai, and I also saw John debugging Jai in Microsoft Visual Studio, meaning that it also generates debug information for that compiler as well. So, mm -hmm. all right. Okay, so we are pushing this thing. Uh, right, so press A or D to move around. Uh, okay, and interestingly enough, when I do A or D, let me find uh, A, D. So when we are in tutorial state, we go into the restart and then I do pop up deck dispose. I'm just disposing the current pop up, right? I'm just disposing it right away because the user already did what is expected from the user to do, right? And if the user did it very quick, this thing is not going to even show anything, right? Uh, this thing is not going to even show anything. Mm, right, and what's interesting is that after we went into the ready, uh, let, let me actually test this entire thing just to make sure that uh, everything is exactly what I want it to be. And as you can see, press A or D to move around and it just boom, and it worked exactly as I wanted. So now after we went boom, I want to also wait one second or two seconds, like whatever, it depends on how we configure that, and then say press space to start. Uh, so let me see, update. Um, so here is the code that the text that we snapped into the, into the bar and we switch to the ready state. And this is where we want to do uh, pop-up deck push uh, pop-up deck uh, press space to start right so this is where we want to do that okay so let's play the tutorial roughly okay press a or d to move around all right i'm moving around so but how do i start the game oh press space to start the game uh but unfortunately it does not uh like you know disposes the space. So what we have to do, I suppose, when we press the space. Mm -hmm. So remember that I had something like this. So here we're going to do pop up deck dispose and we simply dispose in the uh, this thing. Mm, alrighty. So how do I play this game? Okay, press A or D to move around. Uh, Press space to start. And there you go, we passed the tutorial. So this is basically what I wanted. So this is precisely what I described. Oh, okay. So it basically asks you to press the space every time you restart. So we need to, to have some sort of an indication that 
you already uh, passed the tutorial. So maybe we can have some sort of a, like a Boolean variable that indicates that we are currently playing tutorial, right? So there's too much states in here, but yeah. Uh, but maybe that's fine. Maybe it's justified. So like we're getting closer to like exactly what I want, right? So I think the, the other thing I would like to do, I think two seconds is too much. Right, so I think like one second should be enough. So let me actually see. S Sun three, thank you so much for um, five hundred bitcoins. All right, uh, and this seems pretty pretty good. Okay, I want to also do like a full screen. Press A or D, and then boom, and then press space to start, and you start playing the game. Uh, let me see, a boom. Ooh. And you keep playing this thing. It's actually pretty cool. I really like that. Maybe you should keep always playing the tutorial. Just in case the user forgets how to play. I, I don't think it, the user will forget how to play the game, but yeah, I don't want the tutorial to be super annoying, right? It has to be like a one off thing. And once the user showed, once the user proved that they can play the game, it should never appear ever again. So. Definitely need some some stuff. Okay. Mm, let me let me see. Uh, state. Uh, this is not particularly state. Pop up deck. Where is the? I should probably come like take all of those things and like put them in a structure because I needed like a quick way to find this entire thing. So pop up deck. So let's introduce another variable, uh, which is tutorial. Right. So it's gonna be. A boolean initially in its state initially uh, the tutorial is going to be true this one is rather interesting we can replace this true with some sort of process that checks at the beginning of the game whether the player already passed the tutorial or not and then the whole logic is gonna like basically unravel from there right essentially if tutorial the initial state is going to be tutorial and the first thing we put into the pop-up deck is press a or b otherwise the initial state is going to be restart without even telling the user anything right so that's that's rather good i think that is rather good so and since it's not in the tutorial state when i do uh key press press where is the key press right so none of that stuff is gonna happen as well right because you never went into the tutorial the first tutorial state when you press the space there's nothing to dispose in here if you are not in the tutorial right so this is something like this so if you are only if you are in the tutorial um what I wanted to do what else I wanted to do is that after I disposed the press space uh, I also wanted to um, say something like good luck right but the, the thing with good luck is that it's not disposed by the user it disposed after some time which means that the display has an optional time right so you see here we said display doesn't have time it gets disposed when it gets disposed right but it may have an optional time for instance when you want to show like one of thing like good luck and just disappear we need to facilitate that right we need to somehow facilitate that so the question is how we're going to be facilitating that we can just store that parameter right so we can say that pop-up is like has a limited display time right and we can when we create that thing we can actually set it in here mm, so yeah but maybe maybe later so for now i just want to test how my tutorial variable works right so a and d uh, then we do that press space to start and something went wrong so let me find um, 
so I'm not quite sure. Well, I mean, it doesn't really have to be like this. So, restart. We should go to restart thingy. Yeah, somewhere here. Go to ready, but you only do this thing if you are in tutorial. And then you do this thing. Okay. Uh-huh. So, I move around, then... Uh, excuse me? So, it is initially true. Okay, that makes sense. Where do we set it to false? We never actually set it to false, but it didn't work out. Uh, press space. Uh, really? Why it, why it never worked out? Excuse me. So, by the way, I did I change the thing here? Do I recompile? What is going on? <laughs> Why did it still takes two seconds to to do this thing? I don't understand. Some, something is broken. I don't understand what. Mm -hmm. All right. So now let's die. Still shows. Okay. So that that makes sense. And the the reason why it shows is because uh, I do this thing right. But I only should do that if it is a tutorial, right? So, tutorial for whatever reason is false in here. How on earth is, is it false where I never actually said it to false anywhere? I am extremely surprised. Right, speaking of debugging the code, sometimes shit like that happens. Um, all right. Why is it false? When I'm explicitly setting it to true. Mm, I don't know. Speaking of whether you want to program in Jaya right now, right, these kind of things, they can, you know, shoot into your leg. Right, because basically, yeah, this is bad. <laughs> right. Uh, all right. Uh huh. And then you press space, and everything's okay. So it should say press space one more time. Okay, so that's cool. Uh, let me find this thing, and uh, then. When do we finish the tutorial? Right. So, if tutorial, we just dispose this entire thing, and this is where we sort of finish the tutorial so it becomes false. Alright. So, and again, the language is not finished. It's not like the in the final language is going to be like that. Not necessarily. The language is just not finished, like not all of the warnings, not all of the checks are available. Right, it's just like, yeah. And uh, don't ask me when it's going to be uh, finished, like, I have no idea. Uh, I hope it's never going to be finished. <laughs> ah, because then I won't be able to troll people who don't have an access to beta. Ah. So, yeah. Uh, this is so beautiful. Imagine, like, this language being used quite actively by AAA companies and uh, like some certain individuals, but it never becomes public. It becomes like it's used only by this like a few people, like a couple of hundred people, like forever. Uh, but there's a lot of software written in it, but like not everyone has an access to this like, And you can't even buy it or anything. You can only get into the into the using of this like. <laughs> it's so good. I love it. This is the best model. Uh, of development of the language. Mm. So, it's gonna be always like that. <laughs> Secret society language, yes. That's what it is. So move around, a bam, and press space to start, and there we go. So we're gonna die, and it should not show press space to start, because you already learned that. 
The game knows that you know how to start the game. You cannot trick the game. The game knows everything. So that's why it's not going to tell you anything. There we go. Epic. Absolutely freaking epic. E boom. All oh, right, that's that's cool. Uh, what's within the bit rates? I have no idea what you're talking about. The bit rate should be fine, in my opinion. I can make it smaller if you want. It's probably because of the particles. Uh, press A or D to move around. Press space to start. I don't like this row. I think this row ruins everything. Mmm. Okay. Mm, now it's fine. Uh, it's something on the Twitch side because I don't see any droppage of the frames on my side. Sorry. Uh, what I want you to do. What I want you to do. I remember. Does anyone remember what I wanted to do? What I was talking about? Um, tutorial for... Uh, the row. Thank you so much. Yes, the row. The row pisses me off. Okay. So let me see. So we're going to actually reduce the amount of rows. Um, yeah, that's a little bit better. Uh, though, I think the calculation of the color is a bit fucked up. So let me let me actually see. Init state. So how do I... A row by columns, of course. Sure. Okay, so that's, that's a bit better. Look, notice how it never showed any of the signs when I start just playing the game. Look, like... Uh, this is how I start the game, right? I just move around and I start the game. And it never told me, any, told me anything, like, at all. Like, it didn't have time to show any of the signs, so it, it never showed them. So it, it's never going to show anything. Um, but if I start the game and I don't even move, it's going to show press A or D to move around, right? Uh, and then after time it will say space. What's interesting is that if you just do If you start moving around It will still show you press space to start. So this is kind of the level of state complexity I was trying to achieve, right? So it should be like like this subtle uh, And it never stops anything you like at any point of time you you keep controlling the entire thing So it actually feels kind of great All right, so just like very very subtle it just tells you that yeah this is how you you play the game there you go um oh, that's very cool i really like that i'm just looking at an obs how it looks like an obs an obs it looks fine beautiful that's the tutorial we deserve that's the tutorial we deserve uh, so we're gonna have less rows. Does it does it actually affect the gameplay? I don't think it affects the game uh, the gameplay too much. Right. So let me actually play the game a little bit. Right. So just to see. Uh -huh. I don't think it affects it too much. So I can still do a sick combos. Look! Look at that sick combo! Holy shit! Look how many how many points I've got. That's that's pretty cool. Uh, eh? Huh. Okay, so that was weird. I couldn't uh, like unpause my game for some reason. And yeah, we already wasted one uh, one life. So let's see if I can beat the game. Mm -hmm. Let's see if I can beat the game. Mm -hmm. 
Look at that sick combo. Holy shit. Bruh. This is a gaming stream, by the way. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm still a gub gamer. It's just, I'm just a bit unlucky. I'm just a tiny bit unlucky. Yeah. I also need to check... Fuck. Okay. I also need to check how it uh, works in, in WebAssembly. So let's actually uh, test it in WebAssembly. To be fair, I need to test on all of them, right? So let's actually do release, release build and see if the release build. Yeah, there's something weird in here. It says that I don't have an entry point for whatever reason. Uh, sometimes, not always, but sometimes it tells me that I don't have an entry point. <laughs> And I don't really do anything special in the release mode, to be fair. Release is just like I bake the values into, into the thing. Um, and I have no idea what is going on. Uh, so let me, let me see. Uh, okay, so the release seems to be working. Uh, I'm gonna press the space. Cool. Uh, so let me, let me see. Now I'm going to enable the Wasm platform. So let's actually build this entire thing for Wasm and see if it's going to work or not. So let's go. Let's go. Okay, so Python M, HTTP server, 69, 69. I should be actually three. Uh, I should have done that. Done good. Mm -hmm. So let's go in here. It just worked in WebAssembly. Okay. Was that was something weird at the end? Did you notice? Easy. What the hell is going on at the end there? <laughs> what the fuck? Um. All right. That is rather sus. Uh, that is rather sus. We need to debug that shit. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have an idea how we can debug that stuff. Uh, so, uh, it's gonna be JS, load JS, and when we are preparing things. Mm -hmm 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 -hmm. Um, where is that prepare text? I think I want to do prepare text. Uh, prepare text, and I accept the color in. Okay, so we we have a color in here. So if um, a this one is rather interesting. So let me actually just console log the uh, alpha, all right? And just like see how it's going to go. Okay, it's it was flipping from zero to one, zero to one. Oh, okay. Wait, what? The hell? Uh, wait a second. Hmm. Can I? Oh, it's a it's a wrong thing. Um, not really a wrong thing, but uh. Okay, so what if I try to take the color? All right, const color and uh, uh, color. Let me see. Ah. Uh, it is oh it's one of the cases of this thing actually i think it's just like being dumb it's buffered too many and it's just gonna dump them all at once this is annoying so all right so maybe i shouldn't do that uh i'm going to debug this entire thing from a jai all right, I'm going to debug this entire thing from Jai because I have a feeling that somewhere alpha becomes 
Alpha becomes nan or infinite, right? So it becomes nan or infinite. So we'll have to. Uh, so maybe in J it's just like fine, but when it gets translated to um, uh, to the color code, this is where it gets fucked up. So we have to be a little bit more careful with this thing. Let me let me see. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Where do I render? So pop up deck. Maybe I'm gonna go to pop up render. Right, and this is where I'm gonna print the entire thing. Uh -huh. If alpha is greater than zero, then print uh, alpha. There we go. So this is what we're gonna be doing. So I'm going to go to here and I'm going to only build the debug. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so that makes sense. Oh, uh, yeah, that makes sense as well. Okay, so it's totally fine on the JI side. But something fucky wackish is happening on the on the other side. Hmm. Hmm. It's kind of weird. Well, as you can see, it's just fine. So it's something with the um, uh, with the other thing. So I think I have a way to detect that something is wrong. I think I do have a way to detect that. So what if I take the color? Right, and just const color, right, so something like that. And what is supposed to be the size of the color, right? If color length. So we have one character for the hash, and then six, actually not six characters, but eight characters, right? So we have to have nine characters, right? If you take a look at this, a, A, uh, or R, G, G, B, B, A, A. So the amount of characters in here, you have nine of them, right? So this is nine characters. Uh, so that means if the length of this string is not equal to nine, we can try to render it. And this is where we can reveal that maybe there is something, uh, something wrong with all of that, right? Mm, so, and if so, we should probably put some sort of like um, prevention mechanism for these kind of things. Uh, okay, so log caller, uh, might as well do something like consoler log, uh -huh. something like this. Um, all right. Mm -hmm. What the hell is that? We can clearly see that the alpha really <laughs> freaked out for whatever reason. This this is a really weird way of like setting the alpha. And I wonder why. Is that because it's too big or is that because they have like a, a computation problem somewhere? Um, I have a feeling that a becomes bigger than it should have been, right? And maybe one of the things I have to do in here is that I have to find the minimum. Uh, can I clamp? Do I have a clamp in Node.js? Not really Node.js, but in JavaScript, right? Math, clamp. Can I clamp some chicks in this language? I can't clamp any chicks, okay. Uh, JavaScript clamp. That's very weird. Why well, can't clamp any chicks? Okay. I mean, I can implement my own thing. So I do minimum, right? I can have minimum and I can have maximum. Right. So. Oh, let me, let me see. Oy, 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 oy. Function clamp. Right, we're gonna do clamp. Uh, so, uh, low, high, and then the value, right, and then here what we can do, we can just do uh, maximum between low and value, 
maximum and minimum math minimum between the value and the high all right so this is how we clamp this chick so this is the left chick and this is the right chick right so this is the two chicks and you just clamp some chicks uh, all right so and what we're gonna do in here is just we're gonna set uh, 0 to 155 and there we go um, okay so it's actually not math clamp right it's something else um, cool so let's see if it's gonna work uh, it's it should never be like outside of any of that uh all right okay so if i move around it's fine it's fine again so something for some reason a gets bigger and that's what kills it i think right but if you start playing okay it's it, apart from that it works I, it's really weird why this happens uh but yeah it's kind of kind of weird but if you if you fix it like that it kind of works so let's actually test the rest of the things uh right it shouldn't show anything okay perfect so we basically implemented the feature but the only thing that is not implemented right now is the remembering the fact that you already passed the tutorial right so do we have time to to implement this thing uh maybe we do have some time but i have to implement that for both of the platforms unfortunately so i'm not sure if it's, it's that important so maybe maybe it's not it's, it's really actually not that interesting so i'm not sure if i want to do that right now yeah so we implemented everything so i'm gonna just commit that uh soon and i'm gonna let you guys play uh this uh, you know this tutorial uh so in here I want to do something it will be kind of interesting to maybe do something like console log uh, and say that the color must be equal to nine right otherwise something something bad has happened right. uh but it i'm not sure where it makes sense to do that yeah whatever mm -hmm. Coming that and coming that. Let me recompile literally everything. So, by the way, I probably need to remove that redundant login from the game. So, do I have? Where do I have this thing? I think I already removed it. So, yeah, let's test it. Linux first. It says that the no entry for the program. It only says that for the release. That's what's weird. And only sometimes. And I don't really know what I do special in release. I didn't think I enable any optimizations in release. It's like it's literally like the bug, except we bake things into the executable, right? So maybe there's something wrong with that. Uh, but anyway. Mm -hmm. So there's no stuff in here. Uh, all right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's do a committee committee. Mm -hmm. I should probably also do a to do. Real true. Save the fact that the player already passed the tutorial. Alright, so let's actually try to do it like that. Uh, implement the tutorial. So now, um, particles are pretty nice. Thank you, thank you so much. I really I worked really hard on them. In fact, I think I want to improve the particles a little bit. So the tutorial should be available. On this website soon right so in one or two minutes right so try to play it and let me know if it's if it's not too annoying right so it should be available and now all right so i'm not actually sure should i save the fact that the player already knows how to 
play the game because if you know how to play the game you just like start doing that and the tutorial is never shown to you so does it even make any sense to uh, spend time and effort and make uh, the game more complicated just to save a single boolean that doesn't really make that much difference for the player I'm not really sure so you know the the ratio between the like value and an effort is really unclear to me yeah so it's actually too much effort for something that is never gonna appear if you just start playing the game like you usually would right so uh, the, the tutorial didn't play for me uh, and I didn't save anything. Mm, what if you don't play the game for a long time and forget how to play? Mm, maybe. Uh, the tutorial is invincible enough. Yeah, I think I think we, we can just keep it. Mm. But I'm gonna keep it to do just in case. Maybe maybe it's gonna be worth it. Uh, because just to save that single boolean, I need to introduce two separate mechanisms or mechanisms of persisting the data right because we have two platforms we have a native platform and we have a web platform on a web platform i have to use local storage on a native i need to find the place where i'm going to store that boolean so it has to be file on the file system but then where right so usually it's somewhere in a home folder on linux so that we also have several operating systems. So now I have to think, okay, so if, I, if I'm on Linux, I have to store this thing in one place. If I'm on Windows, I have to store this thing in a different place. And if I'm on Mac OS, I have to so, uh, store this thing on, in a third place. So I already have to come up with f four different storages and have to abstract them away just to save a single executable. Next to executable, maybe, uh, but it's kind of annoying. It's just like, is it, is it annoying? Like, I'm not really familiar with, like, conventions on Windows. Is it common when, like, a single executable just, like, creates a file or something? So, it's it's an uh, OG way of doing that. So, this is how games did it back in days. Okay, maybe. Uh, but still, even if I have to come up with two storage mechanisms and abstract them away, it is still too much just to store a single bit of information. We're talking about persisting a single bit of information between the runs of the game for something that is not really that visible to the user in the first place. You know what I'm talking about? It's just like, yeah. Uh, so I can do that, but it's like a single bit for something that is just not worth that effort. Um, <laughs> Totally not worse, yeah, so... Mm. Yeah, when we start like storing additional information like previous scores, right, when we start storing something substantial and we already have a storage mechanism for that, maybe then we can afford to store an additional bit. But until we have that, it's kind of not worth it, yeah. So that's the, that's the consensus, I think, that's the consensus. Um, all right, so, uh, okay, let me see if this thing already updated. Uh, it didn't update for me, it should have updated soon, so... For some reason in my browser, until I open the DevTools and refresh, it never actually updated anything. Okay, so the tutorial works, and if I move around, and then it does that. Okay, so tell me, how do you like the tutorial? Right, so, is the tutorial good? Does it feel okay? Um... Mm, 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 mm. Your GitHub link. Oh shit! I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Yeah, you have an infinite last go because I haven't coded game over. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, needless to say that the, the game is not finished yet. Okay. Okay. Um. And we never see the tutorial. Nice. So this is just something that needs to be coded uh, at some point. All right, so basically that means I'm done with the tutorial for today. Uh, is there something else I can do? This one is interesting actually. So burst the particles not from a single point, but rather from the rectangular area of the target. 
The ability to do so might be useful for all sorts of effects. For instance, when the ball hits the bottom, so it may help to convey the ball disintegrating. So essentially, here's the idea. Um, um, give me the ball, give me the ball. So when the ball hits the target, the target gets destroyed and you get the burst of the particles, but the burst actually um, initiates from a single point, from the center of the ball, right? Which is kind of weird, right? I think how we should uh, burst the particles, we should generate random particles, not in a single point, but within the random points of the rectangle, right? So basically we have n particles to generate, we take n random points within that rectangle, and this is their initial positions. So when uh, the target disappears, the particles sort of like have effect of the rectangle disintegrated. So this is like a small additional thing that I want you to do. And I think it should make a relatively big difference. Uh, what do you guys think? Right, I'm, I'm not sure if it's going to be worth it, but this is something that I wanted to do. Right, and in here, um, and if you still need to burst from a single point, you can just burst from a very small rectangle, right? You just create a very small rectangle and it's going to be the same effect anyway, right? So we can just like do particle burst and instead of position, we can accept the rectangle, right? So we can say area, just burst from the area. And uh, what we're doing here, is that we iterate the count. Uh, we don't really need the count itself, so I could have done something like from one to count. Right? And then we can generate a random position. How can we generate a random position within this certain area? Uh, so I can say vector two, maybe something like this, position X. I remember that there was something like random get zero to one, right? Then I can multiply by the area um, width, right, by the area width, and then I can do area x plus. Pretty old, thank you so much for Twitch Prime, thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, so this is gonna be y, and here we're gonna have a height, and there you go, we've got a, got a random position within that area, right? So, and now we're gonna try to compile this entire thing, and just go through all the compilation errors. Mm. Uh, what if you pause when the tutorial fades? Uh, it we only draw the pop-up when we're not paused. When we're paused, it's replaced with the pose. And by the way, you can check that yourself. You can check that yourself. You're distracting me on purpose. And I can clearly see that. You're asking, intentionally asking something that you could check yourself. All right, so, and of course, I forgot what I was doing. So, uh, yeah, burst. So I wanted to just do this thing. Uh -huh. So projection center. Hmm. And that means, okay, so we already got this thing. Uh, I have target erect. All right, so that means I can do target, erect, target, all right, well, it actually becomes even more natural if you think about it, I like that, this is like very, very natural, uh, uh, just tested the game on the website, it doesn't have a fail state, yeah, it doesn't, it's not coded yet, so it is by design, uh, at least right now. Uh, so we're gonna have a maybe separate session where we call the game over state, right? Because when the game over happens, I want to have some sort sort of special indication for that, like maybe like the bar disintegrating along with the rest of the targets, and some dramatic sign says game over, and then the whole state should restart. So there's like a lot of actions that need to happen when uh, when you run out of life. So I haven't coded that yet. So this is something that needs to be coded explicitly. So, uh, but yeah, the the game is not is not finished for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So when we hit that, so do we have a proj rect? Uh, yes, we can do proj uh, rect proj 
uh, position, project, approach position. So do we have any other things? And mm, maybe it's the same thing. Yeah. Let's see if it's going to affect. Uh-huh. What is that? Well, yeah, that's another thing. Project, approach, position. Uh -huh. Any other places? I think that's it. Yeah, so there was like only like three places where we did the particles. Okay, so we move around. That was interesting. Okay. I think that's better. Is it better? That actually kind of cool. I like that. Yeah, th that is way better. Th that's super cool because, yeah, they are starting. This is so cool. I like that. Holy shit. Should have done that like a little bit earlier, especially if you like hit them from the bottom. Oh shit. That's so cool. Bow. 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 Um, the balance behavior is a bit unusual, but let's assume it's by it's by design. Maybe we can come up with a little bit better uh, way of bouncing around. But yeah, okay, that's that's super cool. So let me actually uh, like commit this entire thing because like this is so cool. I really like this. Should have done that uh, earlier. Um, make particles um, spawn from the area instead of uh, point, right? And just makes more sense. Uh, let me double check how, like, uh, we need to compile that. Oh, shit. Did I, I think I forgot to build the wasm. Yeah, I forgot to build the wasm. Let, let me quickly build the wasm. So it's kind of important. Um, so there's this problem again, uh, error. Yeah, yeah, so no entry point for whatever reason. <laughs> Yet again, yet again. All right, so, and now if I go to localhost, so I should probably, this is not what I want. Just give me the, uh, uh, I think my laptop is dying, but that's fine. Uh -huh. Just give me the ball and let's see. Yeah, okay, so it works there as well. Um, uh, the entry point thing, you might be good to report. Yeah, yeah, but I need to come up with a minimal reproducible example. And I also need to check on the uh, last compiler. I think I have the previous compiler in on this machine. So I just need to double check it in the latest. Uh, I think this is fine. Right, I really like the, the new way of doing the particles, so... Right, uh, let me see. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna just do that, and I'm gonna push that right into the repo, so it should be available to everyone... Uh, wait, what? In a couple of seconds. Is that because I... Yeah, I think this is because I run, run this thing. But if I take a look at this stuff, do we have the binary? Yeah, we, we do have a binary in here. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so what else we're gonna have? I don't know. I'm a little bit hungry, so maybe I'm gonna finish the stream in here. So does anyone have any questions? Um, do 10x more particles for fun. Okay, sure. Um, so you're not gonna spawn more than 256 particles anyway because it's gonna become slower, but... Uh, birth hit. Uh, let's say we're gonna have 50 particles every time you hit something, right? So let's go. E boom. And giant bug. Uh -huh. And so that's actually pretty cool. Hmm. So that's that's basically what we have. It actually kind of feels that the bar disintegrated, so uh, this is actually 
very cool another thing i wanted to add to the particles is also gravity right so i wanted to pull them down uh like each frame just a little bit so that would be kind of interesting to implement uh maybe i can even do it right now uh let me see but maybe later i'm a little bit tired already so so yeah okay so i guess that's it for the day thanks everyone who's watching right now i really appreciate that have a good one and i see you in the next session so maybe i'm gonna stream in unusual times like more often because sometimes it is more convenient for me to stream at night sometimes during the day depending on my current schedule because because my current schedule is co constantly drifting so i think i'm gonna be just like switching up the time like depending on like what is more convenient for me like yesterday it was not really convenient for me and that's why i was super tired so maybe we're gonna do like a day uh for a while and then back to tonight we'll see, we'll see. all right so that's it for the day thanks everyone who's watching right now hope that this stream was interesting uh love you all. Mwah.